Good morning, folk. Lovely to be able to interact with you on, on this lovely Sunday morning. It's, it's not where we'd like to be. I'm sure that we'd all love to be together. But nevertheless, thanks to modern technology, we can still, we can still interact one with another. Um, I, I hope you're all having a good time. I hope that you're managing to use the time productively. Um, I know we're having a lot of fun. Uh, we also you know, just trying to use the time to draw nearer to God, read the Bible, pray. We're having family devotions, but but we're also having a good time. We're trying to get a bit of structure into our day, trying to get some fun into our day. We're uh, all building a 2,000-piece puzzle. Verity is you know, largely the, the the puzzle expert, but all of us chip in from time to time. We've been playing some cricket in, in the driveway and, and out in the garden, and you know we're using our gym effectively. We're fortunate to have a gym, so uh, yeah, we use that gym a lot. And uh, um, it, it's going to be a long 21 days that, that I can tell you. But uh, yeah, the, the more I read about this, the more I hear about it. I think this is necessary. Um, you know, it really is necessary for us to flatten the curve. I just want to share some thoughts about David. And Goliath, and I just want to look at the story and aspects of the story of David and Goliath in the context of what we're going through now and and what we're experiencing, uh, and the spirit of fear that is gripping the world, and the danger we've got to lapse into that same state of fear. Now, you know, for a Christian, fear only arises when we forget who who God is, when we forget who it is that we're dealing with, when we forget who it is who's our father, when 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 we forget the fact that God is totally totally in control. And when we start looking at things around us with carnal eyes, uh, that's when we become fearful. Um, you know, it's 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 a wonderful thing to think that we can be in the presence of God. Um, well, you know, sometimes we actually forget that we've got access right into the throne room of God through prayer. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's I, I guess, to an extent natural that, that we tend to look at things around us, but we forget who, who God is. I don't know if you've ever been in the presence of someone and they've been someone of renown or someone important to you at that juncture in your life. And uh, and you didn't know who they are. I know, you know, I, I had just an amusing story once when I was at, at R&B and I had someone uh, coming in for an interview and uh, they, they'd never met me and I'd never met them. And I'd been out um, and I came back 10 minutes early, you know, ready for their interview and going up in the lift with me was 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 this person that I was to interview and they didn't know it was me and I, I just got talking to them I'm, my, my office was 17 floors up and I asked them what they were doing I said I hadn't seen them and they said no they're coming for an interview and so I figured it was probably me and I said who with and they said with with Mike Field so I I, I didn't let on you know, I was a bit naughty and I said oh, okay well um, how are you feeling and they said no they're feeling nervous and I said no 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 need to feel nervous. He really is a great guy. <laughs> he'll he'll put you at ease. And I was obviously having a bit of fun. And they said, no, look, they've heard that in a work sense that he's quite a tough guy. And I said, yeah, yeah, he may be tough, but you know, if you, if you do your bit, I think he's very fair. And we came to the 17th floor and, you know, so I didn't let on at that stage. They got out at the 17th floor and I went up one floor and then I came down via the stairs, went into my office through the back entrance. Um, and my secretary called them in. And there they saw that it was me, and I just used the occasion you know, to really put them at ease, and, and we had a good laugh about it. And in fact, um, uh, we, we ended up employing them, and we had a lovely, long, long working relationship with them. But, you know, it was awkward in the sense when we first met because they realized they had been in my presence but didn't know um, who, who I was. I had a similar experience uh, when flying from London to to Dublin a few years ago, and uh, sitting across the aisle from me was Helen Mirren, um, that, that actress. She's acted in a number of films, and I thought it was her. I wasn't certain, and we got talking, and you know we had a lo lovely conversation. It's about a 45-minute flight, um, and we just spoke all the way. You know, we had a lovely uh, flight the whole time. I wasn't certain whether it was her, um, 
anyway, right at the end, I, you know, I said, I'm, 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 I'm Mike Field. And you know, she put her hand out and, and said Helen Mirren. And it, it was better that I didn't know that it was her because you know, we just managed to have free, free and easy conversation. Now, you know, that's, that's what can happen to us. So, so often we forget that we're dealing with the most high God and we forget that we in his presence. We forget that we have the spirit of his son living in us and our spirit is joined to the spirit of the Lord Jesus. And, 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 and we have a unity with him, but, but sometimes we don't even realize it. You know, that, that's an absolute tragedy. And, and that's what had happened basically to the men, men of Israel. So let's just pick up the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read verses 10 and 11, and then I'm going to read um, from verse 20 through to 26. Um, and, and I'm going to read also verses 36 and 37. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. And the, and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now you can see they were greatly afraid. Then let's go on to verse 20, where David comes on the scene. Uh, and David rose up early in the morning and, and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the, for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled away from him and were sore afraid. So, so to be so afraid means they were, they were, they were greatly afraid. In fact, certain translations say that that they that they were dismayed. And the men of Israel said, "Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free." In Israel, And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, what a, you know, what a wonderful spirit we see manifest here in David. And if you contrast that against the spirit which we saw uh, which we see in the men, the, the men of Israel, they were gripped with fear. They were paralyzed with fear. And for 40 days and 40 nights, this giant had come out and uh, had taunted them and ha had defied them. And they were totally demoralized. And they, in fact, their fear had got them to a point where, where they had no victory. In fact, they were not prepared to do anything and they actually felt shame as they would have faced this guy day in and day out realizing that they didn't have it within them to actually take on the might the apparent might of of this giant but david comes along and we just see a different spirit in david there's a different spirit in david compared to the spirit that is in the men of Israel who are paralyzed by fear. And you see, the devil wants us to live a life demoralized, helpless, and paralyzed with fear because he knows that if he can get the Christians fearful, that we are of no value in the battle that is going on for the lost. And God has not given us, you know, the scripture tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. God does not want us to be fearful. In fact, God wants to see in us the spirit that was 
in David. So um, let's now go on a little bit and let's just look at the spirit. And I just want to examine the spirit that is that that was within David and 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 how we need to apply that same spirit in the conduct of our life in this circumstance and in the conduct of all aspects um, and all challenges that we face. So let's go uh, a bit on to to verse 36 and 37. Uh, And this is David speaking to Saul. In fact, let's go back to verse 33. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and I slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. What a what an absolutely wonderful spirit that we see in David. We just see it it manifest there. And you know what it is? To defy is to challenge or to disgrace or to discredit. And that's exactly what the devil is trying to do today. He's constantly trying to defy, to discredit, to disgrace disgrace the power and authority of the living God. And he wants us just to sit back paralyzed in fear, doing nothing about it. But that is not the spirit that God is looking for. No. So if we have a look, and I just want to have a look at what was the difference. I want to point out a few differences between the spirit that was in David who had a heart after the heart of God. Because God said, there's a man after my own heart. And so what was the spirit in David compared to what was the spirit in the men of Israel? And the verses in uh, 25 and 26, verse 25 and 26, actually highlight this um, very poignantly. You know, the fact is David was a man who realized who God is. He had it crisply, clearly, plainly in focus who God is. He knew that God was the most high God and his trust was totally In God. In verse 25 and 26, I want to read read those verses again. 25 says, "And, And the men of Israel said, So this is what they're saying actually evidences their spirit. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? So so to him he was another man. And we'll contrast that to how David saw him. But they see him as this great man whom they could not defeat, who was too big, too large, too imposing for them to even attempt to try to defeat. Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And so they they again thinking about a man that has come up to defeat their country. There's no mention of God at this stage. There's no mention of the fact that he's a Philistine, that he is uncircumcised. Uh, They just see him as a man who has risen up, uh, an imposing figure, to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, shall enrich him with great riches and give him his father's daughter and make his house free. And so there's, you know, there's a third element of their carnality is manifest by focusing on the riches and the reward that there would be for the one that defeated this man. There would be earthly recognition and earthly riches to defeat a man who was defying their country. Now let's see what David says in verse 26. And David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth 
this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Can you see David is straight away seeing this through spiritual eyes because he's recognizing that this man is an uncircumcised Philistine. He's not part of the circumcision. The part of the circumcision were the people God called his own was the offspring of Abraham through Isaac. And so David is straight away recognizing that this man is not a man of God. And he's actually questioning why fear of a man who's an enemy and who, who, who's not a man of God. And then he says, for that he should defy the armies of the living God. You see, David's concern wasn't Israel as a nation as such. It was the fact that this man was defying the authority and power and reign of their sovereign God. He was bringing dishonor. He was bringing reproach to the name of God. You see, that was the spirit of David. David's spirit was to see things the way God saw them. And, folk, that's exactly how God wants us to see things. God does not want us to be looking at circumstances through carnal eyes. You see, David knew who God is. David trusted God. David was not afraid of what circumstances in this life could throw at him because he had put his trust in God before and he had found God to be faithful. You see, the men of Israel also would have seen many miracles God would have done for them and had done for, him, for, for them. And there were battles that God had won for them in the past. And they would have read Moses and the law and, and the prophets. And they would have heard about how God parted the Red Sea, how God parted the Jordan, how God uh, caused the walls of Jericho to fall, how God gave Gideon victory over the Midianites and many of the other uh, nations who occupied the land God had promised to them because God had done mighty things and God is the mighty God and they were God's people and God wanted them to trust him absolutely, utterly and totally. God wanted them to recognize who he is, but they had forgotten who God was. They had forgotten who God is because God is. He was, he is, and he is to come. But David recognized it took a little shepherd boy. No experience in battle, but it took a shepherd boy to recognize who God is. And he said, God's delivered me, God's delivered me before and God will deliver me now. And that's exactly what we folk face. Folk, God has delivered us before. God will deliver us now. And now is the time for us to have our spiritual eyes open, not our carnal eyes open. The men of Israel looked at things carnally. David looked at things spiritually. And although there's suffering and hardship, and we feel for everyone that is going through this hardship and the suffering, as Christians, we can be excited because we're seeing being fulfilled in front of our eyes prophecies which are spoken about in God's word and we can see these being fulfilled and these are spoken of as being right in the end times which will precede the imminent return of Jesus Christ and isn't that just a wonderful thought so although our hearts go out and we pray for and we reach out to those that are suffering in our spirits we can be happy because we know Jesus is coming again now, Jesus says when you see these signs look up for your redemption draweth nigh Jesus speaking, I think in Luke chapter 21, he spoke about um, earthquakes, famines, and pestilences. And those would be things that would be some of the things that would precede the imminent return of Jesus Christ. We're seeing these things being fulfilled. So now is not the time to be looking through carnal eyes. Now is the time to be looking and seeing things through spiritual eyes. Not living in fear, but living in hope. Not looking around us, but looking up for our redemption draweth nigh. The last thing that I want to 
Um, just show you a, about the spirit that was in David, and it's in verse 29, I think, chapter 17, verses 29. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? You see, folk, what David recognized, David wasn't worried about getting the earthly recognition and the earthly reward that had been offered by Saul. David recognized there was a cause. And that cause was to defend the honor and the sovereignty and the glory of God in the face of an onslaught from the wicked one such as we've never seen before. We face many, many Goliaths, secular wisdom, homosexuality, lesbianism, gender neutrality, uh, new age philosophy. There's all these Goliaths that are rising up, pestilences that we're dealing with right now. But David said, is there not a cause? You see, let's not be demoralized, paralyzed, hopeless in fear. God says there is a cause. You know, we've had ministry of late about the family of God and the internal aspect where we've got a cause within the body of Christ. Each of us needs to bring that measure of Christ that is within us that we can all individually, collectively feed on the, the fruit that manifests in each believer's life. And we can feed on that. That's fruit that will nurture us, comfort us, edify us in a very difficult time. There's a cause. We need to be committed to the body of Christ. But folk, there's also a cause, and that cause is to reach out to the lost, to those that are fearful, to those whose spiritual eyes are closed, to those who are looking around, who are confused, who cannot make sense of what's going on, to those that feel hopeless, there's a cause. We have a cause. We need to shine from our lives the light of the truth and the love of the Lord Jesus to a world that is crying out for reason, for a world that is crying out to answers. Folk, we find the answers and the light of the truth of God's word. You know, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And folk, you know what peacemakers are? Peacemakers who are people who share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that bring about peace between God and lost sinners. And that peace is available if we call on the name of Jesus Christ. David said, is there not a cause? The danger is we're going to get so caught up in fear. We're going to see things through secular eyes. We're going to lose sight of the fact that there's a cause. If we're seeing things through carnal, secular eyes, the devil has won a victory in our lives because we are impotent. We are blunted. We are rendered useless in the cause what God wants sons and he wants the lost to be saved. You know, the scripture says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And now's the time. Now's the time for us to be seeing things through spiritual eyes, folk. This is an exciting time. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And let's embrace that cause and let's reach out for the lost. Amen.